Alright, this is going to be a quick little video on altering how we see our servers. So currently we have our server name just being test server name, but we want the person who creates the server to actually be able to set the name of his server. So we're going to do that by altering our widget and making another little section like we have here, but with a text box for server name and I guess we'll do one for host name as well so we can include that later on. I'm going to lower that just so it's even. So we can go ahead and get started on the widget. So I want to make another canvas panel. Drag it onto our widget switcher. Actually, you know what? I'm going to copy our main and paste it into the widget switcher. I'll call this one cp underscore create server. And we can see take these and lower them down near the bottom. I'm going to move them a little bit. Okay, or just completely. Alright, never mind, that works. Going to move them in. Gonna do 100 and negative 200 or negative 3. Yeah, close enough. We're gonna do 220 for the Y just to keep them nice and evened up. And we're gonna alter them. So this one's gonna be back. This one's gonna be create server. So we're going to go ahead and compile save and we're going to add some text boxes and add editable text. I'm going to give this a hint name of server name. Change the font to 20. There we go. I'm going to copy and whoops. Copy and paste, make another one for host name. And just save it. Because right now we don't actually have a host set, but we're going to go ahead and just use this temporarily until we get into just a basic player name. So that way we can read it later. Okay, so we have those two text boxes. Let's go ahead and bind our buttons. So I want to bind the back button first. We're going to set the active widget to zero because we're returning to the main menu. Then we need to take our, from our main, when we click create server, we need to change it from creating the server to simply move that down there to setting the active widget to two because that's what our widget switchers for. So we have our first widget, second widget, I mean 0, 1, 2. Okay. So I'm going to change our back button to B underscore create server back. And our other one I'm going to call B underscore create server final. This is a temporary name. We're going to end up probably changing it to clean it up once we actually clean up our code inside of a our function names inside of C++ so they make more sense. Going to give this an editable text box, so etb underscore server name. Do the same thing for this one, etb underscore host name. So save it, they're both variables. Now let's create a on clicked event for b underscore server create final. And that's going to actually call create server. So let's test it. Create server, back. Create server, back. Alright, I gotta change the name. Wait, I'm not going to the right widget, am I? I'm not. So let's scroll up to. Ah, we're setting active widget to 1. We need to set it to 2 for create server. So create server. There we go. We have our stuff. Back. Create server, back. Create server, create server. We should join it. We do not. So, 
That should be the same button. I'm gonna check, just press string. It is. Let's see. Why are you not firing now? Do a quick compile, make sure it's still good. Maybe I just need to test outside the editor. I guess we can't actually create sessions inside it, maybe. Create server, create server. Okay, that was why. So we just can't test that in the editor. I had hoped we could. All right, so we are creating our server. Okay, now let's modify our C++ code. So we're gonna alter our parameters for create server. We're gonna make it take an F string. It's going to be server name and F string host name, just like that. I'm going to copy the parameters, put them in the definition, and compile. And over here we can go ahead and get started, drag out our text box for host name, and a text box for server name. Do get text. Drag off this, do get text. We're going to click on our create server node, click refresh it, and link these two up. Compile, save. Now we need to set the server name. So we do this, we set our custom stuff by doing pretty much setting keys. So for session settings, we're going to do session settings dot set. Then you can see the parameters. We're going to do this one here. So the first one is the key, the second one is the value for that key, and the third one is the type of advertising, so how we should do it. So we're going to do the key, so f name. I do this in all caps, server underscore name underscore key. Second parameter is the value, which is going to be server name. Third one is going to be the advertisement type, so e online data advertisement type. We're going to do via online service and ping. I'm going to copy this and do the same for host name. Server underscore host name key. The value is going to be host name, just like so. And now we can go to our find server, I mean our find uh, sessions right here, and we'll loop through it. So here we're just setting it to test server name for our server name. We need to change it. So we're going to do f string server name empty server name we do the same thing for host name even though we're not going to actually set host name yet we're just going to have the values and everything set up All right then we're going to set the server name for our info variable i mean our server name on the struct to be server name so now we actually got to get the server name from the server so the way we do that is result dot session dot session settings dot get and here you can see we get the key and then the parameter or the value or, uh, sorry variable that we're going to store it in. So we do that with the key name. So f name. I can't remember the name. So server underscore name underscore key. And then the variable we're storing it in, which is server name, just like that. We do the same thing again, but for host name, so server underscore host name key. We're going to store this in host name. All right, we're good to go. Let's compile. Okay, we compiled. Now let's give it a test. I'm going to launch two clients. I'm going to create server. Server name, I'm just going to do hello, this is tutorial server and hit create server. All right, so we got that set up. See, that should be the joint, this one. We're going to go to view servers and refresh servers. All right, 
can see the joint servers just came up, so we are searching. Oh, and here we go. So for some reason we have two servers up right now. Not exactly sure why in that case. This could just be one of those things that I was talking about a while ago where someone else's kind of comes up. So this might have just been the case, but you can see, hello, this is tutorial server. We need to expand our uh, box here so it actually fits properly. But yeah, we're seeing two servers find up. But yeah, that's how I can set that up. So quick reiterate what we've done. Can actually get rid of that little print string. We don't need it anymore, we know it's working. So what we've done is when we actually press create server, we're passing in two more parameters to our create server function that's written in C++. First one being the server name we put down and the host name. Now we're taking those in create server and we're assigning them to our session settings via keys. So we give our keys a name, their keys a value, and how we want to actually advertise them. I haven't really tinkered around with the different advertisement settings to know what is visible here. So I'm just doing online service and ping. You can tinker that, that by yourself and see what all still shows up. But that is how we currently set our server names. Then same thing for host name and all that kind of stuff. So the only thing I want to do now is just make our area bigger for our join. Make this a lot wider. So about how big is that? I wish I can click this. Nope. So we're at 930. Let's do 930. Do negative 4... 65. That should be centered. Yep, that's centered like so. Compile save. And we now have a larger server list. So hopefully the names actually show up properly. I'm just going to give it a new name for testing. Create server. Blah, 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 blah. Test. Create server. So that'll be a really long name just to see roughly how many characters we can store into it. Refresh servers because we're probably going to have to add a limit. All right, so we can store that big of a name, and it still comes up pretty fine. All right, so we know we're good to go. We can see our server name and all that kind of stuff. Keep in mind right now I'm testing on a null slope system, but this should work over Steam as well. So hopefully you learned something. Oh, all right, quick description of what we did for Unfind Sessions. We created new F strings. I just gave them just default values so we can kind of determine if something failed, for example. So from there, we go ahead and we get the keys that we set from session settings. So first one we're setting into the server name is our server name key. Then we're setting our host name via the server host name key that we set to create session. Then all we're doing is simply assigning server name to this stuff here. So I'm going to actually alter our F server info a little bit. I want to create a new F string and I'm going to actually construct it. So it's going to be a new property read only F string player count string for str. I want to create a variable. Let's call it void set player count. What we're going to do is we're going to take our current players, max players, so we're going to do max players. Sorry, f string. So f string, it's not sanitize flow. What is it? From int. I take current players. We're going to add a forward slash. Then we're going to do the same thing for max our other players or max players. Sorry. So f string from int max players. So this is going to construct a string to the current players, let's say one out of two. So we can see that. 
because I'm making a change to the header, I'm going to go ahead and close Unreal Engine and compile. Whoops, let that finish. There we go. Then we can go ahead and set the max players. which is already being set. So then we can do info.set player count. And we should now have our new string. So I'm gonna compile. I'm gonna to go to our server slot widget, which we should have this in it. And we have our player count string. So I don't think this works with the online, I mean the null subsystem for showing players and stuff like that but we're just gonna have to kind of find out. So I'm gonna construct a new string. Plus one server everything, I guess. Just for now, it's gonna be a type F string. Drag it out, we're gonna do set. And we're gonna start appending strings. So we're gonna do server name, append player count string. Oh wait, never mind, I forgot we're doing it. It's a different route. Delete all that. Go back. It says this is for server name. Then we're gonna have the players set text. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Then we're gonna set the text for our players, which is going to be our player count string and just see what happens. This will be a way to test and see if it works. So we should see one out of five. Test server. Refresh. But I don't know if it's gonna show the amount of players that are connected. Yeah, it's not, actually it didn't show it at all. And I never actually said it. That's a smart move on me. So player count string equals that. So now we compile. Dang it. Yeah, screw it. Compile again. Forgot a semicolon. <laughs> Test again. Use servers, refresh list. All right, zero out of five. So yeah, we can see the amount of, well, the max players, we just cannot see the actual players that are in the server. So that's via the online subsystem, I mean the null subsystem, which we are currently using. So if we were using Steam, uh, if I recall from a long time ago, it does work. It's just with the null subsystem. But that's not too big of a deal. It's still good enough for allowing us to set up and test with everything. All right, so that is all for this video. And we're gonna be kind of tidying this up and making it a little bit more useful for seeing server information in the next video. So I will see you then.